The next thing we need to do is extract the rotation component of our offset transform, as I did mention before. And there's a very easy way to do that in VEX, which is using a function called crack transform. So let's make use of that. I'm going to store that value inside a variable called target w. And as I said before, the function it's called crack transform. It requires also a few arguments. And this is the kind of function that I always forget what it needs. So I have to go and look at the help. And you can see that there are two different overloads of the same function. And I'm going to use this overload here, which requires just one argument less than the one above. So the first one is the order of uh, transformations, then the order of, of um, rotations, and then what information we want to extract from it. So we want to extract rotation. And you can see that if you set rotate C equal to one, that's going to give you the rotation. So let's Let's do that. If you want the actual default values for this TRS and XYZ, the only thing you need to do is set this to zero. Now, this argument C, as we already mentioned, needs to be one to give you the rotation. And the last thing we want is the actual matrix that we want to extract the transform from. So that's going to be my offset TN. And I just realized that I missed uh, one argument, which is the pivot that I'm also going to set to zero. I don't want to do anything with it. So now it's working. This should give you the rotation component of this transform. And if you remember from the previous target position, X was the direction of the displacement. In this case, it's a bit different because we are uh, using rotations, but I want to do exactly the same. In here, I was subtracting my current position minus my target position. So in here, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to subtract my current W minus my target W. So let's do that now. Target W it's equal to my current angular velocity minus my target angular velocity. And now we have everything we had here. So we should be ready to actually implement this formula once more. So let's do that now. And we are going to add minus K as we did before for the position times X, which in this case, it's target W. All of that minus C, which is the dampening times V, which in this case, it's W because that's the attribute we want to modify. So let's call this one target rotation. And because I'm using matrices on this case, I'm going to call this matrix. And I'm, I'm doing this because in the next video, I'm going to explain you how to do this with quaternions. So if we go up a few levels, we display flag the target and we activate the up network and you press play, you can see it's behaving quite weirdly. And one of the reasons is that we don't know how long is this target W and the way W works is that the axis define the axis of rotation and the magnitude of the vector defines how quickly it's going to rotate. So I think these values are too high for it. So I'm going to reduce this. I'll make it 0 0.1. And now you can see it's much more, it's much better now. So this is it for the transformation with matrices, but I wanted to also show you an approach with quaternions. That's going to basically give you the same result. But the reason I'm trying to implement this also with quaternions, it's because the guided simulation in bullet that comes with Houdini uses quaternions. So I just want to give you an option that it's consistent with what's used already by side effects in their guided simulations. For the next example, let's create a new point wrangle. The inputs are going to be exactly the same. And again, up to this point, it's going to be also the same. So I'll, I'll just copy everything up to animtn here. And let's expose these parameters. And as I did before, let's set 1 and 0 0.5 as the default. Now, because we are going to work with quaternions, we need to convert these matrices into quaternions. And there's one function that lets you do that, which is called quaternion. So let's create two new quaternions. And for that, you need to use a vector for. And I'm going to call the first quaternion my q which stands for my quaternion. And the function that I did mention before is this one, quaternion. And the argument it expects is the matrix that you want to convert. In this case, I want to convert my TM. Let's do the same for the other matrix. Let's call this one animq. And we need to give it the other matrix to the quaternion function. Now we have two quaternions, animq and myq. The next thing we need to do is to calculate the offset between these two quaternions. If you remember, we did that here for the two matrices where I explained you that the invert of the matrix times my animation matrix gives you that difference matrix or that offset matrix. 
for quaternions, I have to admit I was quite confused because I thought it was a similar approach, but it wasn't giving me the same result. So I had to look online and I found the solution. Let me show you what I found. So I looked on a stack overflow uh, and the question I was looking for was difference between the two quaternions and there was this guy who was asking basically the same thing and I found this solution which gives you the difference matrix, uh, sorry, the difference quaternion. So let's calculate that offset quaternion and I'm going to store it on another variable called offset q and I'm going to use exactly the same that that guy explained before on stack overflow. So I want to use my q and I want to use the invert of anim q and you can see how the invert of a quaternion it's calculated using q invert no invert but q invert and there's one function for multiplications of quaternions called q multiply. And I need to write this one correctly. So now that we have this offset quaternion, we need to convert that quaternion into a vector so we can do the same thing that we did here. We need to find the target w. So let's do that as the next line. I know that I want to convert offset q into a, into a vector, so let's create a vector called target w. And there's one function that converts quaternion into vectors, which is called q convert. It can also convert quaternions into matrices, but because we are specified the type of this variable to vector, qconvert knows that it needs to convert the quaternion into a vector and not into a matrix. So let's feed offset q to the qconvert function. And now it's just a matter of copying the same exact line here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna name this properly so uh, I don't get confused in the future. So this is gonna be called target rotation quaternions like that i just changed the name that's the only thing i did if i press play actually you need to remember that this target needs to be displayed so you can compare them and i have this thing on on the viewport at this level so you can see it's trying to follow the rotation and it's doing something weird that i'm going to explain in one second because that's something that was bugging me for quite some time but it it seems like it's trying to do the right thing at the beginning So if you go back to the target rotation quaternion, what we are doing here is converting this multiplication into a vector, but there is no guarantee that these two quaternions are pointing in the same direction or at least in a similar direction. So we need to find a way to make sure that they are always aiming more or less in the same direction, otherwise we are going to get a lot of flipping like, like what we are getting here. You see, at some point, it goes from this to this because it thinks that this is the closest uh, orientation. So what we need to make sure now is that those two quaternions are pointing in the same direction. And usually when you want to compare two vectors, you use a function called dot product. So we can imagine that we need to do a dot product between these two quaternions. But there is not a function for quaternion dot product in VEX. At least uh, I didn't found it. So I'll made one. I'll explain you how it works. And hopefully it's clear enough for you to use it. If you look online for what a dot product is, you might find a bunch of different definitions to describe what a dot product is. What I'm showing you here is just one of those ways. You might also find different ways to write what a dot product is. Like for example, here you can see vector one dot product vector two. And in here you are seeing vec one vec two transpose. These two things are exactly the same. But usually when I find what a dot product is in books or even papers, you will find it written in this way. So it's a good idea to know that this means dot product because sometimes you won't see any dot here. So with that explained, let me show you how a dot product is calculated. So in here you, we have vec1. So this guy here is this vector. And vector2 is this vector. I am not going into explaining why one is horizontal and why the other is vertical, but that I'm going to do that in future videos. Please don't worry about that for now. The way a product is calculated is the next. You have three components on each one of these vectors. They need to have the same size. You cannot do a dot product between two vectors that have different dimensions. And by dimensions, I mean different number of components. These guys here have three components, which means that they are three dimensional vectors. So the approach is the next. You take the first component of the first vector and multiply it times the first component of the second vector. So you see that here, right? A times X. And then you do the same for the other components. B times Y, so it's the second times the second one in the second vector. And you see that here. And C times C, so you see that here. And then the result of all those multiplications are added together. 
and that's gonna give you one float that's why the dot product is a float value that float it's gonna be closer to one if both vectors are kind of up aiming in the same direction and it's gonna be closer to minus one if they are pointing in opposite directions and it's gonna be zero if they are absolutely perpendicular so if the angle between them is 90 degrees the dot product this value is gonna be zero so now that we know how to implement this, let's do that in VEX. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that because we are dealing with quaternions, they are going to have one additional value. So we need to add an additional expression here, which is going to be the W values of the quaternion. So let's go back to Houdini and do that. I'm going to create a function that, re that returns a float. So let's write float and the name of the function, it's going to be compare quaternion. Oh, actually, you know, just to keep this similar. To the actual dot product that comes with vex let's use dot and let's call this dot quaternion and it expects or it's gonna expect two arguments the first argument is gonna be a vector for because we are dealing with quaternions and I'm gonna call it vec1 and the second argument is gonna be another vector for which I'm gonna call vec2 so with the name of the function already decided and the arguments that we need to feed to the function we can start writing the function something to keep in mind is that we need to return something because i'm defining the function as a float so we need to return a float that's something we will do in a second let's try to make some room here so we have enough space to write because it's going to be a fairly long line i want to create a float here which is going to be called quat dot and I'm, I'm gonna define or actually assign a value to this variable one line below. So let's write this again, quad dot it's equal to. And as I explained before, each one of these vectors have components. So we first need to multiply the component one or the first component of this vector times the first component of this vector. So let's do that. Vec one dot x that's the first component of the first vector times vec two dot x. So we are multiplying the first component of both of them. Let's put this inside parentheses just to keep it clean. And we know that we need to do the same for the other components and then add them together. So let's do the same. I'm going to copy and paste this again. Plus, and we need to do that four times because we know it's a, it's a quaternion. The, what we need to do here is change this. Instead of X, we need Y. That's the second component of both of them. Then we need the third component and the last component. So that's going to return the float and that's exactly what I shown you in Photoshop. So we need to return this now. Return quad dot. If you use this function, that's going to give you a value that goes between minus one to one if both quaternions are normalized. But I don't even need to normalize them because the thing is I only need to know if it's less than zero. That's the only thing I need to know. So now that we have this function, let's put it to use. 